Now, uh, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Kipiani, uh, the chairman of GeoCase. Uh, we just listened to remarks by previous speakers about interesting issues, such as the implications of climate change in the field of defense and NATO perspective, and the uh, energetic sector resilience with particular regard to Georgia's efforts. Uh, now I would like to appeal to the strategic analyst in you, and um, as a representative of the Georgian think tank community, uh, I would like to ask uh, what is, in your opinion, the strategic framework related to the, impl the impact of climate change in this country, and uh, in a broader uh, context, what do you think that governments and international actors and organizations should do in order to forge uh, truly resilient societies? Uh, floor is yours. You. Thank you, Nicola, for your kind introduction, and uh, thank you to the organizers. Uh, pleased to meet everyone. Um, let us uh, just uh, reflect once more and make a brief coverage that uh, we are really in the dire situation when we are in fact uh, witnessing on a daily basis uh, the results of the climate change around the world. Uh, significant, significant changes in the weather patterns, uh, rising temperatures, sea levels, uh, intensified fire seasons, etc., etc. But uh, these are just the physical risks. And every type of physical risks, uh, risk is re require, requires its only uh, uniquely tailored response. But more important are consequential risks, and those consequential risks are uh, that uh, take us to uh, domestic, political uh, instability, disruptions, and fissures in the society. Uh, and that makes our societies uh, even more vulnerable and make them exposed to future destabilizing factors. So all in all, we're witnessing uh, decreasing domestic resilience, increasing probability of various conflicts between different stakeholders, ethnic groups, uh, stakeholders within the society, and radicalizing both uh, national and global politics. So uh, it is also no surprise for each of us that uh, the pandemics uh, have further contributed to the existing great concerns. Uh, we're nearly forgetting the old patterns of uh, business, trade, and just simply human relationships. And uh, the way in which this conference is organized uh, clearly demonstrates and reflects, you know, very, very obviously that uh, example. And uh, before, uh, before uh, uh, leaving my office uh, for this conference, I read a very recent data in the journal, in the journal of uh, natural, natural Climate Change that at least 85% of the global population has experienced weather events made worse by climate change. So undoubtedly new realities uh, of the climate change uh, security concerns the demanding swift and uh, sufficient measures in response. Uh, but it is also important to note and that um, the nature of the modern conflict has changed. And in the context of the late, uh, the, the climate changes uh, and the climate risks have become weaponized and became part of the hybrid warfare. And this is also very important to remember. In other words, as uh, has been pointed out on many occasions, the climate change became a threat multiplier, which adds further to eroding the premises of the existing political system. So therefore, uh, therefore, improving conceptual framework to reassess and effectively tackle the climate change, uh, working out a proper formula of costs and challenges ensuring a proportionate balance of rights and responsibilities, agreeing on effective stress reassessment algorithm. All these issues are the must priorities, both at the, net, at the national level, at the bilateral level, uh, level and at the multilateral level. But uh, as it is well said, where, where there is a risk, there is also an opportunity. And let me 
let me touch up, uh, touch on uh, very uh, um, several issues which um, I, I would raise in course of discussions. The first is reducing greenhouse emissions, including those that, they, that emanate from military activities. And the wider Black Sea region and the Caucasus are lavish in this respect. Having that said, uh, providing for some kind uh, to, to monitor those developments regionally and getting uh, accurate data, environmental data uh, of an impact by militaries, as well as commissioning a comprehensive and reliable report on the issue should be placed very highly on agenda. What could be and would be very helpful in, in the course of this exercise is to apply a so-called mapping methodology used by NATO. It is also important helping NATO partner nations to continue helping countries like Georgia reforming its militaries uh, and uh, implementing various measures uh, for reducing risks posed by dangerous materials. And I, I, up to my knowledge, the later component is very much on the agenda of the cooperation between NATO and Georgia. The next issue is increasing public awareness to better read complex matters within the broader context of the national priorities. And the recent Namakwani case is a clear example of uh, what I've just mentioned. Uh, the public should well be educated to read the underlying risks and understanding that any domestically or cross-border driven action undermines not just critical projects, but intensifies resource scarcity and ultimately takes us to eroding security and defense design. And this is very important. Equally important that, the, that addressing the climate-related response ch challenges, it's not just up to specialized agencies or bodies, but those challenges should become a wider task at the grassroots level and should become the agenda for all-out nation response and preparedness. We already mentioned climate risk and hybrid wars. Clearly, considerations should be given very properly to working out and implementing truly effective measures, but not just talking about the measures, uh, not just talking about the, issues, uh, the issue just for the sake of ticking the box. Next, Georgia Defense Forces have been actively involved in NATO-led and peacekeeping missions, and while I'm always saying that the Georgian soldier is the best ambassador for this country abroad. But having said that, well-designed program to increase their integrity, skills and capacities through accommodating to operate under adverse climate conditions is the very next priority. And we appreciate that these days this is also of high importance to NATO leadership. The last point, ensuring uninterrupted supply, energy, uh, uninterrupted energy supplies and mitigating environmental challenges there too. Of specific importance is the freedom of navigation in the Black Sea, especially through Turkey Straits and the Istanbul Channel when, once, when one uh, is completed. Boosting environmental emergency responses to a potential crisis in the Straits or in the Channel is also of the priority to Black Sea nations to ensure their domestic stability. It is also not worth it that sustainability of energy infrastructure that have cross-border effects like Bakut Pilisi Jehan, South Caucasus Pipeline, Baku Supsa, to name but few, would also help in reducing risks and conflicts in the region. The last uh, point, uh, it is also of key importance that developed nations should share advanced capacities and knowledges with developing nations and nations in transition. An incentive for such openness and cooperation is very simple. Adverse consequences of the climate changes cannot be contained somewhere far from your home. An extremely high interdependence and interconnectedness globally eventually makes all of us, with no exception, to feel and suffer all the downsides. Thank you very much indeed.